Hello everybody. So, I made a tutorial for this game, and I thought I'd show you the tutorial as kind of a sign of progress, but I would also teach you how to make tutorials in games, especially in Unity. Tutorials are some of the most annoying things for most people to create, and if you talk to people who are in game development, they'll tell you that tutorials are awful. And this is especially important because an RPG contains a ton of scripted events, and scripted events are essentially the same thing as tutorials. So, how can you make your game robust enough to handle tutorials? And the answer is, I'll show you right now. Over here on the right, you can see the tutorial events that I have programmed in, and we can follow along as they happen. So I'll hit play, and Jumbly here says, this is the space my grandfather left me. This is the space my grandfather left me. And then when I click, the tutorial automatically tries to trigger the next element, but only if it's empty. In this case, it is empty because the, uh, the characters are going to banter a little bit. Let's bring up my grandfather's chemical lab. If you blow up the building, you'll lose your grandfather's security deposit, and I will risk my security deposit for science. And you can see that here. I will risk my security deposit for science. The next one is a little bit more complex. Winter says, you can call the movers with tab, select the furniture you want, and place it on the carpet somewhere. When I click, there's nothing else. It's done. So let's take a look at what that is. It says, you can call the movers with tab, blah, 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 but there's an event attached here. The event says, uh, turn off the station selection. That's because I, I specifically tell you to press tab, and if you've already pressed tab, I want to undo that so that when you hit tab, it comes up rather than going away. Just a minor thing. And the second one is forcefully add this object to the station stock. So you add your bench, your grandfather's bench, to the stock. What does that look like? It looks like this. So the next one didn't get called because the trigger requirement isn't blank. It has a specific trigger requirement, the bench placed trigger. So let's click on grandfather's bench and let's put it down somewhere, like here. Oh, look at that. Something happened. Time for science. While things percolate, I can move around using Wasad and I can hold the right mouse to move the camera. Easy enough. So let's pause this for now. And I'm going to show you what just happened. So the tutorial doesn't have any concept of events happening in the game world. The tutorial just hears. It doesn't actually go out and do things. The only thing it does is if there is an empty trigger requirement next, it will just move on. So it does string them together. But it has no concept of what a bench is or what being placed is. All it does is listen for something that calls it with this trigger. So let's look at this bench here. And oh, I've got the building visual on so it's hard to click stuff. There we are. Uh, so here is the bench that we placed and you can see that it has a couple of events attached to it. Well, some of them are full. This one here says, data produced, blind tutorial invoke, bench placed. Well, there you go. It triggers the tutorial with bench placed. Now, in this case, I do have to use an, a kind of a workaround here. The data producer script, or actually the script it descends from, has a blind tutorial invoke function which goes out and finds the tutorial in the game world and invokes it. Now the reason I can't just drop the tutorial in here is because this is spawned from down here. It's, it's in here. It's not in the game world. So it has no concept of the objects that are in the, in the game world. When it spawns in, the only thing it knows about is itself. So I have to actually have a function to go out and find the tutorial and I've wrapped it up like that. Uh, now, if you're wondering uh, whether or not you can pass in just classes and, you know, I could have made a static call, you can't do it that way with mono behaviors because mono behaviors do not pass correctly. Um, all you end up with is the ability to tell their name. Uh, now, if it was a scriptable object, they pass great, but mono behaviors don't actually exist until they're instantiated in the game world, uh, and it's kind of a nightmare to try and pass them, so you can't do that. And if you didn't understand any of that, don't worry about it. Um, what I'm saying is that this bench does not know the tutorial exists, so it has to work around that a little bit. But the core point here is that this is an event that the desk understands. It is part of the desk's basic functionality. When I put down the desk, on place it gets called. And it doesn't matter whether it's empty or whether it's got 85 commands in it. I can put any commands I want in there. I can have it turn off the sun. Whatever it is, the desk will just do it. Similarly, down here, you can see on max data stacked reached blind tutorial invoke bench full. Now, if we go back to the tutorial, we will find that bench full is right here. So when the, to when the uh, system lines up, when we get all four of these papers ready, 
then our bench will uh, be full and we will get a tag for that. Bang. What's nitroglycerin? It's a wonderful heart medicine. That's great. And if you drop it, it explodes with 50 times the force of gunpowder. Great. Anyway, look at these notes. I discovered a better way to refine it. Everyone will want to use this new method. So are you going to patent and publish it? Uh, what? I'll do it. Bring my desk up from downstairs. Use the movers again, and don't put it on top of your bench. So if we click again, you'll see that the writer's desk, has, or winter's desk, has been added. Uh, grandfather's bench is grayed out because you only get one and it's already in the scene. But winter's desk can be placed. Like, say, here. Okay, let's set up a workflow. Click your bench, then click my desk, and we'll ship those papers over here. This is where the tutorial ends. I haven't gotten quite that far. But you can see that uh, Winter's desk is in the scene, and as you might have guessed, guessed, as you might have guessed, it has a, a desk placed trigger. So when when you place the desk, it invokes in the exact same way that that over there did. So I've created some custom elements that when you put them in the game world, they have special functions. Now, I could have just as easily put those in to start with, um, and you can, if you're doing that, you don't have to worry about creating prefabs for them. They can just be modified versions of the base prefabs. But in this case, I had to create cloned prefabs because I wanted the player to be able to place them, and that's a little bit difficult to do if they're already in the scene. Not impossible, but a little bit difficult. So that's a kind of basic tutorial, and uh, it can be expanded to almost anything. And you can see how I added things into the scene, and I can delete things from the scene, and I can move things around. I can do anything I want. But the core of this is that all of these items have events that can be defined. So uh, when I need something to happen, I can define some kind of trigger that makes it happen. And in this case, that's these desks. The desk has no concept of a tutorial. It has no idea that it's involved in a tutorial. But it has this function which just goes out and pings the tutorial. Uh, and it's on, it's, it, I just, the event exists and I can put any function I want into the event. So I put in this function here. It goes out, it pings the tutorial, and something happens. And it's the exact same way in any given RPG or whatever. The only difficulty is that sometimes you're going to want to have very, very specific conditions like, uh, if one, if any one of the characters drops to less than 50%, then trigger this event. If you want something like that, you'll have to do a little bit of programming. But for just a kind of general event-based responses, you can do this. And this is also useful for creating cutscenes or whatever. As you saw, those are basically cutscenes. There's no characters in the world, but they were more or less cutscenes. And I created them the same way. So just to go over that again, what I have is a tutorial system, which is just a long list. It's a linear list. There are no deviating branches. You can't go back or forward unexpectedly. It's just a long list of things that have to be done. And sometimes they're interrupted by a trigger requirement. And sometimes their event contains stuff. And uh, that stuff happens when they get called. So that is the core of the tutorial side. The other side of that is the objects that make the tutorial happen. You can try and combine these. I would not recommend it. You have a dedicated tutorial or cutscene system, and then it just gets triggered by the various things in the world that have been programmed to trigger it. And by programmed, I just mean that their events have, had, uh, have, been, have been set up to trigger it. That does mean that you're going to need events. You're going to need all of these objects to have, or characters, or whatever you're doing, the monsters. They all need to have a ton of events as many events as you could possibly want to interfere with. So, you know, you might need to have your every character and every monster has an on-damaged event. Every character and every monster has an on-healed event. Every character and every monster has an on-spawned. Every character has an on-knockdown. All of that stuff, right? And that's all fine, because you can modify that uh, at, as you'd like in order to create these sort of uh, responsive situations. And sometimes that's going to be a tutorial, and other times it's going to be something like, oh, well, if you knock this monster down, it gains 30% of its health back, because screw you, that's why. Um, or, you know, if you heal someone, then uh, if they have a magical illness, they might have that unhealing trigger actually cause them harm instead of getting healed, sort of like the undead sort of thing. So 
You can do a lot with this and all you need to do is make sure that you have a lot of events and you call them. Because if they're empty, there's no problem. And if they're full, then they do something and you need to be able to take advantage of that. That's it.